it works, I and just what do tell I do? you. What do I tell you? Power it down. Yeah, but then that's you. Yeah, see, I have the power. The power to say power it down. Let it go. All right, here we go. Here we go. Ready? Ready. Live from Houston, Texas, is Learn to Paint Tuesdays with your star, Ginger Crook, and Sammy at the helm. Sammy, you have a tuxedo on with a hat. Really, Bear? He's, he's styling, John. T he is. He's setting his own little thing, isn't he? Yeah. Hey, Ginger. Hi, you guys. Good seeing you there. Uh, good. How's our stream tonight? How's our stream? Well, the fish are biting. I am kind of happy about that. Oh, good, because you know why? <laughs> this is important, because he's that's a prelude into our lesson for the night. We're going to be doing something a little bit differently. A segue, as it a were. A segue. That's what it is, a segue. And uh, we're excited. We're going to be doing some sort of fish. Wait till you see what we're going to do. It's exciting. You're going to love it. And I'm going to show you some neat tricks that maybe you didn't know. It's always good to learn new things. That's what, You know, one of the things we try to do on this channel is to... But besides, um, you know, fun. just have fun and paint with acrylics is to perhaps explain why we do things or some things that you do and answer questions and that kind of stuff, right? And I remember, and I'm going to answer some questions from um, our listeners who have written in. And um, if you're just new to our S channel. Speaking of that, did you look up the question from? I did. Ah, I looked up excellent. the question. I know the answer to the question. <laughs> do you know the question, though? I know the question and, and the, the answer. answer. And the excellent. answer that Christine, excellent. that wasn't Christine. It was Christine in uh, England, the UK, that asked that, not uh, Christine Gerst, but that's okay. I've got the Christines mixed up, but <laughs> I do know the answer to the question, and which we'll be answering tonight, the big question. The and, question of the night. And uh, let's see, what else was I going to tell you guys? Oh, yeah. If you're new to our channel, we're an acrylic painting channel. If you've just been cruising around saying, what are they doing? But what we go live because we have lots of fun. We have some great moderators, Kim and... Uh, and Wendy and uh, a couple other guys have, that John will mention in a minute who are kind of keeping the <laughs> trolls out. And John over there is the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're on a roll already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know who's on. I just have Kim, a Kim's little window here, here so and I'm seeing you. And, you know, I'm not seeing you. I'm just no, imagining. seeing you. <laughs> I'm seeing me, right? Just a mirror, mirror on the wall kind of thing, right? So... It's a very strange thing to talk to oneself in the mirror. It's just like, it's very bizarre. Did you know, though, I had a girlfriend one time, and she used to spend hours as a teenager smiling in front of the mirror. So and she then would get her smile down. She perfectly. got it, per and she can just, you can be just, she smiles, and I mean, it's good. I mean, I can see where that would take some practice, because I, mean, I couldn't pull that off. She could just, like that, just change you know so anyway um that being said i want to just show you real quick this is what we're going to be painting tonight these no koi way. fish yeah what, uh -huh. size what size is that that is a 16 by 10 um i was going to say a 10 by 20 yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm probably going out on a limb but i don't think so it's a 20 bias that's it's right a ten, it's a it? 20 yeah it is you're right you sure yeah. Did you know that, for instance, this is a yard between your fingers and the tip of your finger. That's a yard. Did you guys know that? I knew that. That's 36 inches. So, you know, it's probably, now, now, he's now, probably it, true. See, it that's about 20, is right? Is it different in Europe? I mean, since they're on the metric system, is it a meter for them or are they still a yard? I don't know. And maybe if they're, they're a yard, that's going to be really screwy for them. <laughs> that's not fair. Maybe their noses are shorter. It doesn't work at all, right? <laughs> I'm just wondering about this. You're, you're you know, giving these just, tips. And just well, you know, I used to sew. I, mean, I used to sew a lot. You know, you know, you I made Cinnamon's wedding dress. You know, Cinnamon, my daughter Cinnamon, got married at the Renaissance Fair, and so she just couldn't have any old wedding dress. She had to have a dress that looked like something that came out of King Arthur's court. It took me a month to make it. It was really something. I mean, really something. And I made, I made it, and then I um, anyway, it was long and involved. Another <laughs> long story, but it was really pretty when it was done. She still has it, kind of locked away in a trunk. Um, so we're going to be painting that. And also, if you have not subscribed to this channel, we're, we're just putting a plea out to you guys, really just from the bottoms of our hearts to your hearts, please subscribe now. We don't send you emails. Nothing terrible happens. And it has been statistically shown to us that 50% of the people that are watching our painting videos aren't subscribing. It doesn't hurt you to subscribe and it really helps us. All right. And so, you it know, we're going to just... Nothing. 
costs you nothing and it helps us and so, you know it's it's uh, really valuable to us so please subscribe we appreciate that very much and you know anytime you can put a video on a playlist or share it that seems to make these little algorithm computer th whizzy things really happy and then <laughs> oh you're are, talking that technical talk i know and then a technical talk here and then what happens is that the um the algorithms go around and say, hey, you should see what Ginger Cook just did, right? Yeah. And, and this is, I mean, this is and the way we get the word out. On, sharing on Facebook is a big key. Yeah, they really seem to, I don't know how they know these things. I mean, it's just almost like Big Brother, the way they know what you've been doing, like Santa Claus. Have you been sharing on Facebook? I'm going to know you haven't. You need to be sharing on my better friends on the Facebook. Okay, so, okay, so here we go. No, no, before we get started. Hey, where'd you get that shirt? Did you paint that shirt? You know, John, I did not paint that shirt, but I have a good shirt source, which is Woot.com. And, and how do you I, spell it? W-O-O-T.com. It's owned by Amazon now. When I first started going there, Cinema's husband, John, uh, turned me onto that site. And um, they do a neat t new t-shirt every day, and the artists like ourselves design the shirts. And um, I always look for a, a shirt that has lots of color on it, so if I get paint on it, it Nobody still looks... Knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. That's the plan. Nobody knows. And so I, I might spend hours on that side. I might spend an hour looking for one shirt, you know, that I think, oh, yeah, I could wear this and it would still be good. And I've had this, oh, gosh, two or three years and it washes well, so I'm happy with them. And they're very good quality and they're very inexpensive. If you buy them the first day, I think they're like 10 bucks, including shipping or some crazy thing like oh, that. Oh, this is crazy. And then after that, they're just a little bit more. And just, uh, you know, so anyway, that's, and Amazon buys them. So if you go to Amazon... You can go scroll all the way down to, you know, the they have a whole area. list of little words at the bottom, like little fine print. That is called and the footer area. And they're little affiliates, and you'll see it in there, and you click on it. So, anyway, that being said, we're starting off on this uh, 20 by 10 by 20 uh, canvas. You down there, and though. you want to just come down here. And what I've done is I've painted it a dark blue color. All right? And it's just, that's been dry. And I want to, want to again, encourage you. I didn't do it this time. I want to encourage you. See this? Hear it? Doesn't sound so like now it's just it's not it's not a drum yet. So we're going to try. I just squirted myself. I love that, <laughs> don't you? I just ooh, in the face. All right. So we're going to do this. We're going to squeeze the back of this. Now the we want to tighten this canvas up as much as possible and get this drum thing. And hot water is better than cold. I'm just using cold. And a and a hair dryer would probably be even be better. But you know, for now, this will still work. This is still this is all wet back here now. Now. It's still, it's still a little, um, it's still a little bit. We'll have to give that a chance to just soak in, but that will make a difference. Now, what we want to do is, so I'm going to take a round brush, any kind of nice round brush. If you don't have a round brush, you could use maybe a, a filbert or something like this. But we're going to be making. I want you to practice with your shoulder now, not from the wrist, shoulder movements, right? Now, I want you to think of. Um, here's my hand, okay? So I'm going to start with the circle, and I'm going to keep going and going and going and going. Everything's circular. See that? And it all comes off the shoulder. So I'm going to just um, wet the brush and then we're going to wipe it off on a towel. And here's our paints. Let's just give you this, the same lowdown. Hey, well, no, we've added a few colors. I lied. A couple of colors. We've added some colors. We added some phthalo green and um, we're going to put Boris Black out here later because I want actual black on the koi fish. Normally we don't use that. If you didn't have black, you could use ultramarine blue and purple and that would work pretty well too. All right, now I'm, I've got phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, southern ocean blue, and southern ocean blue is a Matisse color, but you can make that using phthalo green and phthalo blue and white. So basically it's just more convenient, that's all. And then we're gonna have some different reds, but right now we're gonna mainly concern ourselves with the titanium white. See how I've rolled the brush in the titanium white and I've rolled the brush in a little bit of phthalo blue Maybe a touch of ultramarine blue like that, right? Now, got all this paint on here. I'm going to just start right here. And from I'm going to, and, and from my shoulder, I'm going to start rolling the brush like this. See it? I'm going to spin it around and I'm start making circles. And I'm using the whole side of it, not the tip. This isn't a Zorro thing, okay? <laughs> no Zorro stuff. This is side of the brush, okay? Now, I'm going to just roll it into a little bit of paint, a little bit of uh, white. A little bit of that kind of Southern Ocean blue color, or that could be phthalo green and and white and phthalo blue. Oh, Ginger, you've been caught. What? Where'd it go? Caught what? Somebody noticed that there's a green paint. Oh, Marty. Say, what is that green on Ginger's palette? That is phthalo green. 
All right. Does nobody listening? <laughs> Are we on a delay? We're probably on a delay. Okay. All right. So but here we go. But it's a green. You don't. You Normally, don't, yeah, yeah. No. And this is and because I'm using Southern Ocean Blue, but if you didn't have that, this is how you'd make it. Thalo Blue and Thalo Green would make it. All right. Do you see how I'm coming around here like that? And now I'm going to just go straight Thalo Blue and White. Okay. And maybe come here with that. Just you want to be able to. Um, just straight, straight thalo blue and white. Maybe just some thalo blue make this a little darker. This is your second coat. It doesn't hurt to get a little bit darker up in the corners like that. And um, j just here's what you do when you come to this is important. All right, I'm going to do something right here like that. Okay. Now you've got like a line. So what do you do? Okay. Take your brush, wipe it off, and then smudge out the sides. So we don't want any patchwork quilt going. We want everything else melting into everything else. Just barely touch it. Melt it all together. Now I'm just going to go pure white here, but my brush is dirty. Now look what happens when I bring some white up into here. What we're painting is the bottom of the or pond, and maybe the sky is reflecting. And this is what you're seeing. So here's some ultramarine blue on the brush. Nothing else has changed. Just a little ultramarine blue. And I'm just kind of bringing it into there. Turn, it, turn my brush over, and why? Because your brush, when you use a round brush like this, it has all kinds of colors on it. Here's some, a uh, little bit of the uh, uh, Southern Ocean Blue, but that, you know, you can add a little white to that. Now, what, just, si what size is your round brush you're using today? This is a, uh, a number 14 round um, Imperial Bristle by Creative Mark. That would be a brush maybe sold at Jerry's. Okay, now, Let's just, for the fun of it, take a little thalo blue and thalo green. I'm going to show you what that looks like, a little tiny bit of white, and show you what that color is. That's a little more intense, actually, but that's pretty. Okay, so you can see what that would be like. You know, there may be, you know, you want to just kind of be able to, um, you're getting a really, really interesting background. Now, if I take a tiny bit of yellow, just like that on the brush, if I put a little bit of yellow, I can suggest that maybe there's a little floatsome or something in the pond. Just so, what is it? Little floaty stuff. Floatsome. Floaty stuff. Floatsome. Floatsome and jetsome. Isn't that what they say? I, I don't have know. No idea. Never That's what they that say. Part. I think okay. they say that. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm always working my wet edges. Now I'll come get a little more white. Come over here like that. We want some really nice uh, contrast where our fish are going to be. Like this. And uh, I, I did mine, uh, you know, deep blue and I think that's a nice color. Here's just some pure thalo now coming along the edge here like that maybe just kind of softening this color out here like that and just wiggling it in there it's it, because you've got already have paint on the on the brush it's very you can get some beautiful shades of this now we're just pure white now watch this I'm just going to come up in here like that barely touch it just using the side of the brush almost a little circles barely touching it a little more white side of the brush barely touching it we're just uh, just have fun with this learn you know play a little bit with this here's some more thalo blue play a little bit with this come around here like that see what you got now let's just clean this up a bit okay I'm going to rinse my kind of wipe my brush no water anymore now I'm going to just uh, kind of soften that edge right there because I don't just soften this edge okay then pinch the brush and maybe soften this edge here Okay, you can do layers of this. You could dry this to two or three layers if you wanted. All right, so, all right, so let's see. How about right here? I think I want a little bit of, let's just do something a little different. Let's take some, um, let's take some zinc white now, because that will be a little bit different. All right, I'm going to show you that. Let's just take a little zinc white. All right, because that's your transparent white. Let me show you what that does. Now that's very transparent. It's not going to change your color that much. You know, where titanium will really change your color, but that won't, okay? Or maybe I'll go right into ultramarine blue and say I want something a little darker right here. Now, look what I'm doing. See, I'm just barely, just kind of playing with the edges. See that? So that they all melt. Okay? You want to be careful. You don't want this all one color. You don't want to get so crazy that you end up with just one colored canvas again because you mix these all together. So if you have to, here's a little phthalo. If you have to, dry. Dry between the layers if that helps you. Do this a couple of times. And um, it can be real effective. And it's a good uh, uh, practice to learn how to do this too. Just uh, This is not dissimilar to how clouds are made. 
Here's the titanium white just to show you a little contrasting difference. All right, now everything's pretty thick and wet. Now, if I dry this just a little bit, and I don't have to dry it much, I'll show you what'll happen, okay? John, we're going to pop a minute and just dry this with the hair dryer. Let me just uh, soften that edge right there, okay? And then I'll show you something we can do with this, all right, real quick. I'm going to probably take about three minutes and dry this, and three, we've got some uh, artists we can brag on while I'm doing that. I'll find something. All right, and uh, listen, thanks everybody for coming to our, our, our party tonight. We're hoping, we think, thanks for you that hung in there with us last night. That was a riot, but we got the, we got the picture up. And uh, for those of you who didn't hang in there with us long enough to see what it was, here was the finest, final picture, here right here. Here's the final picture, Flowers by the Bay. And we put the birds in and everything. So that's the final picture, which I thought was nice. And that's been uploaded. And that's ready up. to watch. We what we ended up doing was because we record everything here at the same time. So we had it took us about three hours to you know record it, and then we had to go up and re-edit it and all that weird stuff. But it's up there. Hopefully, with most of the glitches gone, it should be pretty good. All right, we're going to um, dry this now. Okay. All right, we have one more Wednesday live. That will be tomorrow. Will be our last live Wednesday for those that are asking that particular question. Um, we have a painting from, oh shoot, I don't remember who did this, and I don't remember who showed this to you guys, let me show it to you. It's the, uh, balcony scene, and she added a bird to hers. I just thought that was really clever. And really good job on the, the stucco wall and all, that's really a nice job. That really came out well. Um, another one we want to talk about is from Jill. Let me find... Okay, here we go. Let me show you this one from Jill. This is the first thing she sent in. Now, I want you to look at the flowers closely, and uh, Ginger wrote back to her and said, you need to tone down those white flowers. You have too many stars. All right, too many people want to be the, the star of the show. So, after that, See, I got that one and Jill first. Then here's her second. See how she puts those start? Can you? Oh, here. Well, I can put put you know, put the sound down on. So so basically, what I told her to do in this picture, because it was really just practically perfect, was that you know your eye goes to the lightest light, the darkest dark. Okay, first, and so the center of interest is that chair with the hat. So if the flowers around. The chair are a bit brighter than the ones behind your eye it leads your eye right to that so you can see she's got a few flowers in the right by the chair that are lighter and she's very softly glazed back very just just hardly imperceptible just a tiny bit push the flowers back the white daisies back so they're not as white as the ones by the chair and that's where your eye goes so these are some subtle things that you can learn to do yourself kind of just uh, turn you know turn on at the end of the painting turn on and off the lights okay turn off some lights turn on some lights all right so here's our pen I think I'm pretty happy with this background um, I can show you this one on our fish I think I'm pretty happy with it a little more green in this one but um, again no two are going to come out exactly the same depends on how you do it now what I want to do too is I'm going to show you um, the principles of how to draw a koi fish, all right? This is so simple, you're going to just love it when I explain it to you. Hold on I second. promise you, you're going to love it. Can't zoom at the moment. Can't zoom, all right? I'll well, you down a little bit. all right, so here, here's, here's, what, here's what we're drawing, all right? Here's our koi fish. Now, I want you to see this shape, all right? Because basically what you're drawing is that you're drawing something that has a slight curve to it. Do you see that? And then the nose is slightly blunt, doesn't go to a point like this, okay? It's slightly blunt. So if you figure out the middle part of the fish is the widest, okay? And then back by the tail, where the tail curves, in our case, we've got the tail curving back like that. And right where the tail curves is where it's the thinnest, and so it's going to come up here. Just do a few little dots like that, and you've got a fish. Do you see what I'm saying? So then you just have to decide how long you want to make it. If you're going to say, I want it this long, then you just obviously you'd bring it out to here like this and just do a few dots like this. I promise you, if you do some dots, you'll, you're going to find out. Most people learn how to draw when they did handwriting. People who say they can't draw, it's just you just haven't, you've just somehow convinced yourself that that's so, but it really isn't. Well, by the time you learn how to make D's and L's and Q's and P's and all those letters and numbers and stuff, man, you draw. 
you all draw and you learn early. So now you just have to just, you know, now you're just, you know, learning shapes in the mind. Now the tail is going to come out like this and it's going to be very, very, um, you know, kind of thin, you know, and this will be the wide part of our fish. Now what happens is that the, what I see sometimes with this fish is he, they, it's a cat, a koi fish are very colorful catfish. They're in the catfish family, okay? And normally they have these little whiskers and they're going back like this, kind of like corkscrewing back. And don't put them out like this. I mean, I see people do that. They put them out like, like this. <laughs> they're going back, guys swimming. Whiskers are got and going back, okay? So we're gonna put the whiskers back and then a little further down, we've got some fins like this. They're coming around like that. Okay, and when we go to do the eyes, the eyes are like little tiny grains of rice on the side, not on the top of the head, like a carp or something. You know, what is that, the uh, top of a head? What was the fish, top of a head, like a sand fish or something? They're on the side like this, okay? So no, no, no little brown, round dots on the top of the head, and kind of keep it like that, keep it thin toward the back, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing the other way, so you get the curve going. Decide how fat you're gonna put him. Then, then, then you're just gonna, you know, curve his tail around. See, so I mean that's pretty simple. I mean, if you wanted another one, we the last of the big spenders. I'm not saying, you know, I didn't put one in, but you could put another one in here. All right, like that. You could have another one coming this way. And you can have lots of fish in here, but we're just gonna do two tonight. But that's how you draw them. All right. So everybody's now you're feeling really empowered. You know how to draw them. So how big are we gonna make these? Well, I don't know. Let's let's see. I think we're. Um, John's right about this ruler. This is 12, so that's got to be, yeah, 12, that's 20. So that's, all right, John, here's 12 to here, right? And then this is another uh, 7. 12 and 7 is 19. Must be 20 then. <laughs> you don't, how wide is it? It must be 20, though. Then it's 19 close enough to 20. It's 10, so it's got to be 10 by 20. All right, I, all right. So we're going to say that our first fish is about 10 inches long. So I'm going to just um, put his nose, I'm just going to come in almost a little bit past center and come up about four fingers and put a little dot there. And I know I want him about 10 inches long, like, like about like this. Let's see. Well, let's see. Let's start back here. I want four fingers from the side about the middle. So I guess 10 is coming over a little bit further. All right. So here's, here's kind of the area I want him. So I'm saying if that's his nose and this has got to be the wider part of his the fish I can just do some dots see like this and then we want to get this curve going around this way where his tail is curving like that so there's a there's his nose and then if you do the dots let's see how well uh, you can make them fat but this one's about uh, two and a half inches wide yeah about two and a half inches wide like this curves back like this curves like this all right Okay, so that's that fish. And then we've got one, his nose is kind of about two fingers away from that guy. And he's got to be curving back around here. His tail's got to be curving this way. So I pretty much know that he's got to make this arc like that. and know he's fat this way. So then he's coming back like that. See? I mean, that's, that's pretty easy, right? Once, once, once we've established, you know, kind of some points of reference, Okay, there's this one, and here's our big one right here. Now, I think I've got him long enough. I may bring him back a little further. I think I may bring this one back a little further than I have him. Come up here like this. This is why we do chalk. Okay, so I'm going to make this one a little bit longer, right, like that. Make this one slightly bigger. Here's his um, nose. Now, what we do here, this is really easy. You're going to take a... I don't know, some sort of reasonable brush. This brush has got to go in water because we're not using that one anymore. And let's find a, let's say a reasonable brush. Let's find a size brush that we can work with here. Here's a, um, this is a ruby satin silver brush and it's a number uh, eight bright brush. Okay, so I'm just going to start with white paint, no blue in it preferably. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to paint my, my fish white. And why are you doing that, Ginger? Well, I'm painting it white because he's going to be orange, and, and, and orange and yellow, and yellow only paints over white, right? To make it bright. Yeah, so we want him to show up. So 
got a little bit of blue in here, but I think the, the white wasn't as pure. I probably should put some more white out. Now let's see. Let me move this out of the way. A little tiny bit of water on the tip of my brush so that this flows easily, okay? Because my white paint's pretty thick. I'm going to come in here like that. Now, I'm just going to kind of round off the fish. I'm going to, on the sides, once I've, um, once I've established how wide I want him like that, once I've got, got him in here like this, there you go. Let's say that there's my fish coming back like this. I'm not going to do the tail. I'm going to stop at the tail and then say, here's, our, here's this first fish, okay? And then here's the second one. Here, I'm going to say he's a little smaller. They're friends, though, obviously. Okay? And you can make a much bigger painting than this. I've done done this five, six, you know, fish in this, but the, the idea of how you paint them is the same way. So I'm going to start it right there and say here's this fish. Okay? So it doesn't take long to, to paint the white in like that. That's just, that's a nice coat of white. This is professional acrylic. If you're using a student grade paint, um, it's going to take two coats of white to, fi to fix this. And honestly, if you're using a student grade paint, just go out and get the professional white. It just saves you hours of aggravation, and um, it's not that much more money for a little, and, and you'll use less paint, okay? Now here's a smaller brush, and I'm going to go into the, the transparent white now, and as I come around for his tail, I want his tail to be more transparent and more wispy, so I'm going to use the transparent white, which is the mixing white, or the zinc white, and um, bring his tail around here, kind of feather this around into nothing, and just bring that around almost halfway here. Do you see that? Not quite. And the same thing with this one. We're going to bring his tail around using this little angle brush. There we go, like that. And just Again, your chalk will wipe off. Here we go. Here's his fins coming out like that, okay? This is a very, and then i got to kind of fix this curve right there like that. So you can kind of just sort of square away that curve. There you go, like that. So those are, those are our two fish. And this, like I say, this chalk will wipe, wipe off. Now we know I've got a fin. Here's where the whiskers go. So I've got a fin coming out about like this. So I might as well put that in with the mixing white. And the same thing this way. Pinch the brush, just have the paint on one side like this and then there's this fin. The fins are kind of under the water and you want them a little more translucent. Same thing here like that. I know I just thought it was fun to paint something different. We've been doing a lot of flowers lately and I know flowers are all great and we're going to do more flowers but I thought it might be sort of fun to have something else to do, right? Just just you know don't want to be one trick ponies here. We can you use that expression one trick pony. I can't say that I did, no. You never heard that expression once? Well, no, I've pony? heard it, but I, I never used it. Never used it, huh? No. Well, actually, I really understood that, because when I was a kid, I had a pony. His name was Buster, and it was an appropriate name, because he was always busting me up, right? He would throw me off all the time. I tell you, that's how I learned to ride horses, was on that pony, because he had a way of just, you know, I'd be riding along, and then I was one minute, and the next minute I was on the ground. And I got absolutely no sympathy from my parents, so, you know, pretty soon I, there was no point in running to the house and, you know, crying about it because nobody cared. You know, just, we got you a pony, what do you want here, you know? So, <laughs> so we, 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 uh, we finally um, had a meeting of the minds. And Cinnamon, when she was a kid, my daughter Cinnamon, she's the archer, but she had a pony too. His name was Whiskey, and he didn't dump her off so often, but um, he was a pill. The ponies are really smart. People don't appreciate it. They're actually smarter than horses. And um, and they, they and they, the parents think it's just so cute to give their kids a pony. And they don't understand that these, a horse is just kind of, might be bigger, but it's just going to be kind of dumb for the most part. Gonna be, okay, kid, what do you want to do next? You know, these ponies are going, I don't think so. We're not doing that. Really? You thought we were doing that? Nuh-uh. We're not doing that. I'm tired of this game. I'm going to sleep. Go away. You know, that kind of thing. And they, they can kind of, you know, hold their own weight. All right, so... There's our fish. So while that's drying, I'm going to show you something kind of cool, okay? You ready for that? Whoa, where'd it go? I put it away, and I'm going to bring this oh, down we're all here. Oh, done? All done. No, that's drying. Okay. That's drying, right? Now I'm going to show you something on here. Now this is our, um, this is our, this is our finished uh, piece that I did this morning, right? And um, this is, I don't want that. Where's, where's my, 
That's what I threw in front of you, the little guy. Little guy well, here's ahead. the little guy, but no, I was looking for my one. varnish. I was looking for my varnish. Do you, have, you know where my varnish is? Oh, not the string gel? No. No, no, I thought I had some varnish. Do I have some sitting right there, some medium and varnish? Could you grab that for me, please? Oh, yeah, I'm right next to it here. I know, you're just like across the room, but he's closer. you're closer than me in a little cup. I'm going to show you. First, we're gonna, I'm going to varnish this, you know, because what well, I'm going to show you a trick. We're going to do something really neat with some string gel. Yeah, this is just uh, gloss, medium, and varnish, right? So first I'm going to get another one of those cups, John. Okay, I'm going to put some in this cup here. Like that. You don't shake this, by the way, all right? Never shake it. So we're going to take, I'm just going to take a brush. Put and, it back on properly, yeah, well, I'll do it eventually. Shake all right, so here's a little varnish brush here. Okay, so, all right, so now I want you to see what happens when I varnish this. Look how the color starts to come alive like that. Do you see it? And I'm going to just... I'm varnishing it in the direction that I painted it. So when you're doing something like this, it's almost X's, okay? And you see how it starts to pop the color. Do you see that? And it's because this is a good thing to do when you're um, when you're when you're painting after you're done because what the varnish does is it um, it brings the color back. It just it, it brings it alive. You'll, you'll really see it. It makes it look wet again. And again, because this was all different directions, we're varnishing kind of like that. And then we want to make sure we've got the fish. And then I'm going to show you a neat little trick with the string gel. We're going to use something called string gel because if you want to make your fish at the end of this look like it's underwater, here's this fish here like that. And I'm just sort of bringing it on both sides like that. Here's that. And look what it does to the how bright the fish looks now, right? That's pretty. And then. Here we go, and then the water looks all shiny, which I love. Varnish also kind of niftily erases. Now this I, is a gloss varnish, right? This is a very gloss, it's gloss medium and varnish. And you could you could do a coat of varnish and keep painting. Did you know that when you're using a gloss medium and varnish, you can do a, a you know coat and still keep going, um, and it'll dry in about an hour, and you can do a second coat. Okay, but this will be all right. Um, because it's all a polymer, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, yeah, you know, uh, and and put the string gel right on top. I just wanted to make sure I had it varnished first. All right, you see that? Now see how beautiful and shiny that is. Let me just let you compare it um, to this one. You see, it's just it, the varnish brings the color back out in your piece. All right. Now, so theoretically, aren't you supposed to wait out a day or two between after you painted a painting? No. You can varnish as long as it's been dry until the next day. But an hour later, you can do another coat. And you know, like I say, with a medium and varnish, you can add it to your paint, John. You yeah, can well, add it yeah, to your medium. paint, and you can use it as a medium. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's oh, going so to, it's a polymer. It's gonna go right into the, it's gonna go right into the um, a paint and grab it like this. It's gonna become molecularly part of the painting now. Right. All right. Because it's so a this medium is, as well as a varnish. It's a medium as well as a varnish. It's not just a varnish, and that's that's what we're doing here. So now I've got that, and that's that little cup. Okay, so now varnish brush, what happens to that? The reason you want a special varnish brush is because of the, as hard as you try to get the varnish out of a brush, it's at some point there will always be a little bit of residue, and you may in a year or two you have to throw the brush away. And I don't like to, I don't want to spend a lot of money on brushes and then have to throw them away. So. Um, my, that's what I do. So anyway, we've got this action going with the varnish. Now, make sure there's no drips, always varnish flat. Now this is something called um, string gel, which is right here. This is string gel, which is different than pouring medium, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to take some string gel and we're going to um, pour it like that. It will dry clear. It's like honey. It's really thick like honey, all right? But it will dry clear. Here's put the lid back on. I didn't get, think I got anything on the sides. We almost had a terrible time getting the cap off because I don't use this very often, but there's some things, abstracts, things like that can be very fun to use string gel. Now, I'm going to grab something called, you could use like any paint that you've got, any acrylic paint, and any of your fluid paints, okay, are really good. Now, what I want to do is create... Um, the idea that these fish are in water using the string gel. So I found some of these Philip Martin uh, dyes. And I'm going to just take the turquoise one 
and um, but you could use a, an acrylic ink doesn't really matter okay and I'm gonna just um, add a drop of this well I would add a drop drop that I guess that was two drops okay now let's just take the with this with the brush and stir it up like that can you see what I'm doing that would be the back end of the brush that back end of the brush yeah now for this procedure can you use regular varnish or should you be using that medium and we're gonna just dribble string string some around dribble it around over the fish like that we are yep it's oh. coming and going but it's not it's nowhere to these strings fish is underwater and I want to just cross over my fish like this and indicate that he's under the water here I mean I can do that and you got to just you know go with this right okay like that I'm gonna say he's under the water and it's you know I didn't put very much dye in this or pigment okay um, I'm gonna just do something along here like that I just figured I mean what am I gonna do with this I might as well use it up okay and again, this takes about 24 hours to dry. So probably by the time we see you next to next time, which will be tomorrow night, um, it will be it will be a dry. And I want to just make sure I don't go over my bubbles because I want those to look a little three dimensional like that, right? Okay. And you could also just do some clear too. You wouldn't have to do any color. If you do some clear, it will just but remember, your paints will work in this too. I just wanted to just barely tint this a little bit. And now um, for those of you that are just coming in, that some of I see some of you are. This is not the finished painting. This is the one she did earlier this afternoon. Yeah, this is something I'm just showing you. We're gonna. We, this is string gel, and I'm just putting this on it. And um, I want to just uh, show you what now that would be like. Who makes that string gel? Liquitex makes it. It's a Liquitex string gel. This is a Liquitex product. And, uh, you know, there's all this stuff at the, at, the, at the store. What do you do with it all? It's all good stuff. You get the feeling that this fish was under underwater. Okay? So I'm just saying that, the, you know, I'm going to put a little over him like this. I'm kind of out of string gel at this point. I think that's all my string gel. But you can, you know, you could do more or less. You know, but there, there it is, and it will pretty much stay in these ridges, like strings. So this is really good for abstract too. When you're just crazy with an abstract, for instance, next week, uh, no, in three weeks in May while Sometime. we're gone, <laughs> this is an abstract we'll be doing on YouTube for you guys. This will be an abstract we're doing. It's called Abstract Roses Flowers. Now this would be something where you might have fun with string gel at the end of this. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but you, maybe you would. Uh, just saying. So you got to be open to new ideas and new things, and that's what's fun about being creative as an artist. And you can see that if I put this up, it might want to want to run a little bit, but it's not really moving. Do you see that? It's pretty thick stuff. But it is kind of cool. Now it's gonna. If I put it on thick, like for instance, here's the um, here's the jar again. This is just called string gel by Liquitex. All right. Now if I put um, if I put a little, I just, I think I will do that just to show you what it looks like clear. So when you see it tomorrow, you'll see what I'm talking about, right? You just pull that label off. Chrissy wants to know, could you, you do something like this with the interference paint? Oh, uh, yeah, the interference paint would... Oh, now you made a mess. Now I made a mess. Sorry, John. I made a mess on this one. Well, you can't be perfect all the time, right? So, all right, so here's some, just here's some clear stuff, right? Now, the clear stuff... Is uh, when it goes on, this on tomorrow, it will look clear. And I wanted to do that, spots, almost like little bits of glass. And it might be fun to put a little bit of clear right over the. Oh, there you go. You're risking it, huh? Over the over the uh, little water droplets like that. Put a little clear over those to see what would happen. See? I mean, I could. Well, I just did. So <laughs> <laughs> I just did. This isn't just she could. She just did, right? She did it. I did it. So then, anyway, that's your string gel. That's what you can do with it. Here, that, that's some with and some without, and it's kind of hard to tell the stuff that's with and without, isn't it? So that's, I think that will make this painting even more interesting than it is now. 
and I'm going to give this to John real quick and the lid because it's this is a bear. Okay, so this is I'm um, just put that in the water. or You want to take it? Okay. Do so you want the, to take that painting away from you too. So no, because well, I mean, just to get it away from here, so it's yeah, you can. You want to take it away? Yeah. Okay. John's just going to take that away for a minute. We'll put it back. So here's our fish now, and they're still wet. And this is what we painted white. And so what I'm going to do now is that it takes a while for to dry, John. So it's not a panic. It'll it'll be okay. John's quickly running to the sink with all this stuff, going, ah, it's all a mess. Here's, I'm the one that had to undo it all. You might want to use gloves, because this feels like honey on your hands, and it just is kind of yicky, you know. It really feels like you've just been playing in honey. Um, that would be the only caveat is um, I wasn't wearing any gloves. You might want to wear gloves to do this, all right? So uh, my next thing is I've got this white, uh, um, these white, Fish. And I think while we're waiting for those to dry, I'm going to show you how to do some bubbles. We're just going to make, we don't want perfect circles. So don't like copy lids or something. Bubbles are kind of interesting if they're not so perfect. Yeah. So here's a, here's a bubble shape here. And maybe we'll do a smaller one here, right? Maybe one over here. We'll do a little bubble shape like that, right? And if you want more bubbles, knock yourself out. <laughs> How's that? Knock yourself out. You want more bubbles. So the first thing we're going to do with the bubbles is take some white paint and we're going to paint them white. So then, you know, and as you're doing this, you're going, well, this is easy. I'll just paint like a hundred of these. I've got the white paint out. Why not? And then you start doing the bubbles and you go, oh, I remembered why she said only do three. I remember. Now it's coming back to me. And then now if you feel after you get three done, if you're feeling particularly uh, confident, do a couple more. Okay. All right. There's another bubble. Okay. Some, some bubbles. And then, you know, again, you don't want them perfectly round. And, you know, you could, could you do a couple of little, you know, smaller ones like this, too? See, I just didn't practice what I preached. But, you know, could you? Yeah, you can. You know, you could. But I, I would just say do a couple. And part of me wants a bubble over here, a fish or something. But we're just going to leave that alone for now. All right. And incidentally, if you like animals, if you like fish and animals and stuff like that, we've got a really, on our gingerstickcooklive.gallery, we've got some of the neatest animal tutorials, which are really kind of detailed to do on YouTube. But for instance, this is one of my favorite, this Rottweiler dog. I love this painting. And if you want to check us out, you know, if you haven't seen, we, heart, we, don't, we show you a lot of flowers and stuff. But we show you all the other neat things we've got over on the website, which is really cool. So, John, I'm going to take a minute and just move everything out of the way and dry all this, and then we'll continue painting. Is there any questions I can answer? Or should I answer Christine's question, the big question? Let's do the big question, and then I have, let me do this one. Does Ginger know how to use Crackle from uh, Shannon? I do know how to use crackle, Shannon, and we, we have to get into that sometime t soon. That would be a good, a good question. Um, so Christine asked me the question, since you've been painting uh, since about 1964 with acrylics, um, what, is, what it's been like for you as an artist and how have they changed? That was the question. What was it like way back then, you know, back in, you know, prehistoric era when we all <laughs> were playing with acrylics and nobody ever heard of them? Well, you have to appreciate, my mother was an artist and she was an oil painter, my adopted mother, and we sort of bonded in a small way with art. But I was, you know, I, you know so I knew how to use oils, but I really didn't like them, and I was more of a watercolor artist. And then uh, I discovered acrylics, and they had just come out, and they would do what you could do with oils, but they worked with water, and they were really cool, and I loved them. And Liquitex was the first brand I ever found. And there were just, you know, there weren't as many colors. There was just a few people that had them. But they were wonderful paintings. And I really, you know, went to town with these. And then I discovered that art galleries wouldn't touch them. Nobody wanted acrylic paintings. They just, you know, most of my friends are professional artists. Everybody uses acrylics. And then they put a little oil on top and say oil and acrylics. But let me tell you something. Most of them are acrylics. And half the time they're lying. Um, because sometimes there's this mystique that somehow oils are better. Um, but in, anyway, back then it was really tough. And that now all the brands are making acrylics. And Golden came out with some phenomenal acrylics. And, and everybody, you know, all over Europe, you'll see great companies that make acrylics. And because uh, people discovered the, the, how marvelous they were. And the colors, have, and the, the, they've improved tremendously over the years that acrylics have. They're really great paints. So that's what she wanted to kind of want. But at the time, I remember uh, when I was living in Aspen and Cinnamon was just a baby 
and there were all these art galleries in Aspen, and my goal was to get into every art gallery in the city of Aspen, which wasn't a very big town. You know, it's like, you know, entering and leaving was almost on the same sign. But, you know, nonetheless, there was like 10 or 15 art galleries, and my goal was to get, I got in almost all of them. And that was my goal. And, you know, so I was painting all this different stuff because they all wanted different things. And I learned a lot. That was fun. Did all these art shows and learned a lot. But it was a real, really um, a challenge to get your artwork accepted because you were using acrylics and not oils. And it would have just as easy for me to go out and buy oils and do the same thing, and I didn't want to. At that time, it just came a thing with me. And um, anyway, I'm going to dry this now. Wait, would you like to do um, the bridge? Christie's Bridge, the six part? Yeah, we could do that. I think let that kind of naturally dry, and you can do this because it okay. needs your special touch. Sure, all right. Now, this this was a um, an artist who's one of our senior members at gingercooklive.gallery that takes great advantage of our uh, art coaching. And she sent me this bridge, and this was a painting I did. It's one of our uh, two cookie lessons, very simple, and it's basically to show you... Um, um, you know, how to kind of mix some greens and, you know, make a little stone bridge and some water, something very, very basic. And when she sent me this and she said, what can I do? Now, she changed the flowers from the original painting. I don't know if you have the I original. Did. Let me show you the original painting. This was the lesson that, she was, that, that we were doing, okay? Now, you'll notice that one of the rules in landscaping is that the farther things are away, the colors are less bright and they sort of fade out. And so when she... Um, when she uh, put those bright red flowers back there, she brought the whole whole picture forward okay but you know I, it, the main thing for me was the bridge the bridge really needed to just be reshaped and that's something it's not that hard because you can find any old round thing like even a lid to a pot and find make an arch you don't have to be able to freehand an arch and just find something round and cut, trace it so anyway um so uh i mean i talked to her about that that you know that she had to watch her lights and darks and um, you know, and reshape that bridge, and perhaps you know, um, you know, put the put the little path in. You know, I suggested that you put the path in, and um, uh, just you know, kind of think about those things. So then, this is what she sent me back, and she sent back this with the the um, with this. Uh, she fixed the bridge really beautifully. Fixed the bridge. We still had the bright red flowers, but I hadn't addressed that completely. I was really concerned about the bridge. But she added a little purple to the sky, which we said we really liked, which we really liked. So then I said, okay, so I went and took her painting into Photoshop, into my version, of my inexpensive $20 <laughs> version of Photoshop. Which is called Painter 5. Painter 5 from Amazon. because I don't have 16,000 hours to learn how to use these programs, you know? 16,000 <laughs> Just, okay, 16,000 hours. I just don't have that time. But anyway, I could, you know, so basically what I did was I went ahead and I showed what would happen if she toned back down the flowers, the red ones, and then, you know, maybe just toned the ones in the front a little bit and just played with that and add a little color to the water to see what might happen if she would do that. And this is what she sent me back. Isn't that charming? And she's got that beautiful purple sky, which was really, I thought, improvement over, that, you know, the one I, even I had created. I love the purple in the sky. And so she, um, you know, she toned back those flowers. And, and, and that's the difference. So if you look at that, John, and then you show her the first one. That's the first one. And the second one. And sometimes it helps to have a second pair of eyes. Now, if you do not have a second pair of eyes, what can you do? You can be your own second pair of eyes, and you know how to do that? Hold your painting. Uh, don't show it to your husband or your boyfriend or girlfriend or something. Hold your painting up to a mirror and look at it. Every once in a while, just go hold it up to a mirror. This will give you a second set of eyes instantly. And it'll help you see uh, what, uh, you know, something is. Now, this is still tacky, so I have to dry it. Oh. All right. Sorry. Going to have to dry talker. it. Fast talker. Fast right. talker. All right. Go. All right. While she dries that, um, I think the next one we have is going to be another critique we want her to do. So, reminder, last Wednesday is tomorrow for our live streaming. We'll do no more lessons on Wednesday. We're going to do Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday for sure. And then we will continue my art journey, John's journey, as time permits. We didn't get to do it this last Sunday because we're getting a lot of stuff done before we take off. we got to get a lot of recordings done and posted and ready to show when we're out. 
All right, that's pretty good. I think this is pretty good. All right, the reason, now we're going to go just take a clean brush, and we're going to start with the lightest colors first on our fish. All right, let's just do that. Let's just take a little bit of a yellow, and a little tiny bit of cad red medium, probably about 75% uh, yellow, and um, maybe even a little white. How about that? A little white, maybe. And let's just start here on the sides here, and let's just... Um, uh, just, just color our fish, and you want to kind of avoid the head. We're not going to uh, color in the head a little bit, but we are going to color in the um, the sides of the fish here like this. Kind of got that one a little whiter than I wanted. All right, we're going to color that in, and then I'm going to take a little bit brighter orange here maybe and uh, come here, and I'm going to avoid the tail too. The tail stays white. Now I'm going to get a little more cad red medium, and on the sides here, I'm going to suggest the fish is round, by darkening the sides. Do you see that? And that will make the fish appear rounder. That's one of the little tricks with koi fish. And also, they have a pattern to them. If you were to look at koi fish, we had koi fish in a pond when Cinnamon was a kid. We dug our own pond and had some koi fish. And um, we, um, they're all different. And if you were lucky enough to get a koi fish that had, they all have the, they, they value the pattern from looking straight down at them, okay? So if you look straight down at a koi fish, the pattern on the back is what's um, consistent. It's been said that if you had a koi fish, because they come in all colors, so you can look them up on the internet, Let's Google them if you want an interesting koi fish. We're just going to keep these kind of simple. If you happen to, you know, give birth to a, you know, <laughs> in, in your fish pond to a koi fish that had um, the Japanese flag, which has been done before, I think that fish is worth like 100 grand or something like that. And one of our friends, uh, uh, her husband was a doctor, and he raised koi fish, and he had these really um, big uh, concrete tanks, and um, they looked like children's swimming pools, only they were huge, and they were uh, concrete, kind of ugly, and under a shade and everything. And, and then he had some pretty ponds, too. But anyway, so he had all these koi fish he was raising, and he, I think he told that they told us he spent $20,000 just on one of them. You know, that was his hobby. And I'm just thinking, you know, one day the pump went off and everybody died. And I'm thinking, man, this is, that's, a rough, that's a rough hobby, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? That's a rough hobby, you guys. But anyway, so we're going to say it's a little bit darker here on the sides. A little bit more yellow here, maybe up this way on this one. Hey, Cheryl would like to know, if you wanted a smaller bubbles, would it be good to use a Liquitex glass, beads, acrylic texture gel in a few places? Um, you, know, she, uh, you know, Cheryl, that's an interesting question, the glass beads. I have gotten some glass beads before, and it, uh, it might be fun to try it. What I would try it on a little tiny test canvas first and see what happened. You know, you know put some on a test canvas, because those glass beads are surrounded by, by a polymer. So when you first put, put them on, they look kind of like wet, thicky stuff with kind of milky, thicky stuff with some bumps in them. And then when it dries, the be beads show up. So um, put them on something else first to see how you like the effect. That's always a good, if you're, when you're using new things and you're not sure what it does, try it on something you're not crazy about, you know, just, you know, be, you know something like that. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow oxide in yellow, maybe add a little yellow in here like this to this one. Remember, yellow only paints over white. Okay, like that. And these, these paint in fairly easily. And let's take a little more cad red down here, and let's just sort of darken the sides here a little bit. Now what we can do on the, on the nose of the fish to darken that is we can just take a little bit of a, you know, kind of white and say thalo blue or something. And, you know, you know, if you darken, or maybe even ultramarine, let's see, a little bit of white and ultra, ultramarine probably be good. Okay. Um, if you just, you know, darken the sides of the head here wherever there's white showing, okay, you can just suggest that it's rounder here too. See, like that. And you can take a little bit of the thalo blue and white or the thalo green, anything, and just add a little bit of color now of the light blue into the fins like that, like this, just a touch. Just add a little bit of color, not the whole thing. You're just sort of glazing it over here just to make it more interesting. Now, while that's drying, so we can put the other color, once we get going with this, it's pretty easy. Well, this is drying. Let's show you how you're going to do the bubble. All right, so we're going to take some phthalo blue. That's green shade for those of you who are using Liquitex. Thalo blue green shade. And let's come along here like this. And one side, here's the rule. One side of the bubble is dark and one side is light. And then the top is sort of in between. Okay, like go, think of Goldilocks, okay? One side is dark, one side is light. And... um 
one side is very dark and we're leaving a little tiny bit of this white line showing very little okay now I'm going to take a little white paint like this now here's the top of the bubble now I'm going to pinch my brush use the back of it and kind of say there's the top right like that and I want to come kind of come down where you barely see the sides of this right like this and then the very front of its light like this the very front of the bubble is light okay like that Okay. What, what determines the front of the bubble? You just pick a side. Okay. Pick a side. Would all the bubbles be the same? Well, you know, I guess it would depend on, on you know, technically I suppose they would, but, you know, I don't think they have to be. Okay. I think it's just, I, I think we're getting pretty picky. <laughs> Sorry. You know, at that point. Well, I mean, I know, this the engineering, you can't help yourself. All right, so now on this side of the bubble, the light side of the bubble, we're going to make a shadow in the water. Take a little phthalo blue, and we're going to make a shadow in the water here. Now, I don't want a bib on this, so now I'm going to take the back of my brush and then just dissipate the outside of that so that I don't, you know, it just sort of melts into the background, see? And I want to come up here with a little more phthalo blue, darken it up right next to the bubble, right like that, and then use the back of the brush like this and almost just erase it and just barely touch it and you can see where it's kind of dissipated painting okay so it's um, that's one of the little tricks so we're going to just kind of come around here maybe with some little shadows on these bubbles here now on these small ones we don't have to be quite so technical but we're going to give it a dark side for sure here's a little dark side on these okay and then we'll give it a little light side like that on the, on the other side like that remember we don't want a yin yang symbol so you've got to melt this color in, you know, you can't leave them like that, okay? So top of the, you know, the, the top of the bubble, you're going to have to sort of tap that out here like this and pinch your brush off to mop up the excess paint you've got, okay? And if you lost a little light, just or dark or something, it's not a panic, just put it back. And so a little bit of dark around these bubbles like that. There we go. All right, now... I want a little bit of this kind of blue-green color up here on the top of this bubble right up here like that. A little bit of this blue-green color. That's sort of pretty. A little more white. You take, these take a little playing with it. They're really nice when you get it done. Then you put a little paint. Now this is the trick. Wipe the paint off the brush. Use the back of the brush. Little tiny circles and just soften that out. Okay, like this. Okay. Now, then you take white paint like this on the top and do boop boop and there's your little um, kind of like the highlights little highlight like that little tiny maybe just one bop on those right there's your little highlight one bop one bop like that hey, one you know, bop or two bops last night we never did get to finish our number six question from the art trivia oh no we were painting art playing art trivia and then we just lost our feed and John lost heart and it all got sad <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a pretty night. It wasn't just, pretty. John was really having a rough night, you guys. It was not sad. Okay, again, again, we don't want the yin yang business here, right? So we're no yin yang business. We're going to come down and barely see this white line. It's just going to be the slightest white line here. We're going to come back with more white paint. What's our question, John? Well, I'm What's going to wait until we question? get 200 thumbs up. I have a question. It's going to be a number six mystery question, but I want. Six more thumbs up. I want to see 200 oh, thumbs Oh, listen. Up. Thank you guys for giving us thumbs up at all. We really appreciate this. <laughs> I'm telling you what. I appreciate it. I'm going to take a little Southern Ocean Blue and make this a little darker here like that. Somehow okay? I do that. All right. Now I want it darker here on this side like that. See, here's the light side of the bubble. Okay. And then I'm going to just dissipate that out. I got a question. All right. What question? Okay. I'm only at 196. Uh-oh. We need what a couple more thumbs genre. up, you guys. Thank you. Sounds the, like the character of the... Okay, now if you lose your white around the bubble, what can you do? Just take your brush and Oh, put we it got back. 224. See, people want to play this game. Okay. All right, guys, you've earned your right to go for it. Okay. What painting genre sounds like the character trait of someone who looks at himself in the mirror too often? What kind of genre? Now give me, uh, give me one that's not an answer, John. Now stop a minute. Give me one that's not an answer because I'm not sure I under, even understand the question. When you say painting genre, right? Do you mean like me? abstract art? Do you mean like watercolor? What are you talking about? When you say genre, you mean... I think so. I've never heard of this genre, so I'm not sure. Is okay. G-E-N-R-E -E genre? 
genre because we got people we got people English is their second language let's cut, 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 cut everybody a break it's feeling like it's my second language about now so <laughs> I need a little help with this too so you're thinking about a genre being say um, um, like uh, like abstract art that's right? what I'm thinking all right so what kind of the genre yeah, of painting again. what painting genre sounds like the character trait of someone who looks at himself in the mirror too often Okay. You have something well, in mind? Well, who was that guy in, in, in Greek mythology that was, uh, that was, uh, that was looking at himself? And he looked at himself in the pond and he fell in and drowned. Remember that one? Oh, we, we have people that have the correct answer out here already. Really? Yeah. But I remember that guy. And in fact, this takes me back to... Narcism? Friend... No, I don't think so. Read yeah. the question again. Again? For a third time? You guys can't get the question... I'm yeah, sorry. Right. We'll read it to him a third time. You know, when I was going, uh, when Cinema was a baby, I had really good. We live in an Aspen with some. We had uh, these friends, and there's this one kid. He was from the South, uh, uh, Southern United States, and he he was in his twenties. We were all in our twenties. Nice, nice kid, and um, but he was the vainest human being I think I have ever run across in my life. I'm telling you what, this young man was a really good looking. And he knew it though, right? Just that that wasn't matter. Just knew it. Just loved the fact that it was so. And his <laughs> wife told me on their honeymoon, he spent like two hours in the bathroom just combing his hair. Oh, I don't do that. And, you know, and and um, I always play games. He was or just. Um, I mean, he was. I, I just never met a person, and and that that was so. That was. Uh, that was the, probably the vainest person I've ever met in my life, and still a lovely human being. It's just it was so funny. It was just so. So, um, so what do you think the answer is, Ginger? Um, well, you know what? I, I'm not sure, John. I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm thinking I, I, narcissism is narcissism is that what what I'm thinking about if someone's really vain. Um, but I'm I'm not sure that I know if it. I'm not sure that I know, John. Well, Ginger, I'm going to give you a clue. Yeah, give me a clue. If I tell you it begins with a V, what are you going to say? Begins with a V. You just said it three times in the story. Do you not listen to yourself? When you're telling the story, you don't listen to yourself? No, I guess not. <laughs> v, but... Um, yeah, V. V. No, just tell us the answer, John. I'm not sure. Tell us who's got it right. Say who got it right. Say the ones uh, that people said. Say the answers and the names of people that called them out. Come on, before you tell us which it is. Say the, say the names of people who said it. Everybody uh, likes to hear Christy. Their... Christy said what? Vanity of some sort. Now, if if nar if the nar whatever you said, nar narcissism. Is that the same thing? Uh, narcissism is the same thing, but that's not the same thing. A vanity gallery is um, where a person who's just has their own art gallery, like the Ginger Cook Art Gallery, and it's even considered more of a vanity gallery is if you suck at it and you have your art gallery up there. They, oh, the person's not any good. It's just a vanity gallery, right? Um, oh, okay. That that's, would be considered a vanity gallery, okay? Well, they're, they're talking about an, uh, what did they say? Was it an art? Is an art genre, a painting genre. I never knew that paintings had genres like that. Well, it's I'm not vanity. It's a vanity. So, well, who got it right? Um, looks like Christy, um, everybody else had the other one, so self-portrait, self, Sil self. Sylvia said self-portrait, a, a lot of them said the narcissism. Well, that's what I was thinking, Wanda. narcissism, but I don't know that that's a genre, right? So I guess we need to look up painting genres. Yeah, what, yeah, because I'm just, I'm just, again, you know. I'm not, I, I, like I said, I never knew they had. See, look at this. See, this, this, we got another bubble coming up here, you guys. See here? We want it lighter in the front. On this side. I'm doing my well, bubbles while I'm waiting for, for moving, that. Thank you for moving your painting around while I'm... Yeah, I just got this bubble here going. Oh, I'm pinching the brush, wiping the pore, and, you know, when you're picking up... Genre art is a periodical representation of any of the various media of scenes or events from everyday life, such as markets. So it must be somebody just paints himself. Really? Well, there are people that um, that paint themselves a lot, you know. But again, um, uh, you know, I've never done a self-portrait. Yeah, we have to try that. 
Well, yeah, we have to try it. You know, sometime, you know, you know, one, you know, one of those magazine games where they, they ask you questions about yourself. Like if you were to party and there were 13 people oh, there, yeah. who would you talk to or, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm going, I don't know, who would I talk to? She says, what are you talking about? And she went through all these questions. I'm going, I don't know. She says, you don't know anything about yourself? I said, guess not, you know? <laughs> I, like, I guess not, right? Then, no, I have no idea what you're talking about, right? Guess not. And then how does that make you feel for the rest of the day? Well, just, you know, just thinking, well, I just, I should think more, right? Um, <laughs> all right, so zoom back out. Now, you've got to see our little bubbles here. See our bubbles? Now, what I want you to do now is take a little of this green and, and blue or just make a little kind of green-blue color. And where, remember, there, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So we know we've got a, a fish here with its kind of light next to here. So if we kind of darken the pond up a little bit here around the nose of the fish and refine it a little bit, see? Like that, just kind of refine the nose and just sort of, you know, nothing has to be, nothing's written in stone here. You can, because you've done this type of background, Here's a little white and, and, you know, here's a little phthalo blue and stuff. And I, maybe I want a little darker blue right here uh, next to this. Um, this is our center of interest where these fish are. So maybe I'll put a little bit of a shadow here and then just bring it out into the rest of the canvas. Does, does that make sense? Because you've got this multicolored canvas, which makes it possible for you to clean up. I guess what I'm telling you is clean up your edges a little bit. If you need to do that, take a moment and clean it up. You can erase your chalk either with paint or with uh, you know water if it's dry but uh, don't be afraid to come back and, and and you know like for instance take this tail for instance right in here I want it a little bit darker by the tail and I want this tail a little narrower so I can come in here with the water paint color paint and then maybe take a little white here like that take my brush pinch it and then just sort of um, blur all this out, feather it all out into the background, but I want a little bit darker right here. So you can you could take a little bit of time and just uh, you know play with your backgrounds a little bit too. It's not a terrible idea. You don't like your tail. That, like I say, nothing is written in stone here. And uh, maybe I want this a little bit darker by this bubble out this way too. Just there. Okay, so these bubbles are sort of showing up. All right. So there's our bubbles. There's our fish. Now. Um, the next color we're going to get on this fish, we're going to just rinse our brush really well. We've done the bubbles. That was a good one, John. Um, that was a really excellent one. I like that one. Everybody having fun with our fish? You guys kind of like our fish that we're doing? We got, everybody's kind of having fun with this? Everybody's enjoying the fish. They All love right. the blues. The blues are great. So, you know, one thing you can do, now, the, now you can keep the fish. I mean, there are just orange koi fish and just black koi fish and white koi fish. You know, there's the, But I'm going to take a little naphtha crimson. Of course you are. And um, you're going to gingerize the fish. Okay, so um, add a little ginger sauce. Okay, there we go. So we're going to put a little bit of the naphtha crimson is your deep, you know deeper red, and maybe I'm going to say that there's a little bit here. Look here. So if I put a little naphtha crimson right there, see how I sort of darkened it just on the sides. Well, brighten. You know, it. just and brightened it up too, but it's also a darker color. Yeah. And the other thing I could do with that is I put a tiny bit of ultramarine blue with that like the, the smallest amount, like 1%, you can really darken it up. So if you wanted to say, for instance, that there was a little shadow here, you could just, you could add that. Um, you, can, you can play with these a little bit too. So you can add a little shadow here if you wanted to, like right about there if you wanted to say it was a little bit darker, like this. So, you know, so just anything to kind of, you know, give, this, give, a, give a little bit of depth to your fish. And also there may be, for instance, here's a little bit of red, you can bring the pattern over on their back like this. Just play with this. And, and then remember, there's a kind of a line down their back. We're not really putting it, but there's like a line down the middle of their back. But the pattern can cross over onto one side or another. can do that crazy kind of stuff like that. Just don't make straight lines. Yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just try not to make straight I lines. I can just hear her telling me that now. Yeah, just, Why are you making that fish square? Yeah, 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 don't do that. Now, okay, so now the last color I'm going to do, now you can do black on top of here, and that would be fine. I think in the other one I did black. I think I'm going to show you what happens if you did Dosnine purple. I feel it's a little more arty if we did purple instead of black. So I'm going to show you purple, but black is certainly acceptable. A little bit of purple and ultramarine blue, and that's going to be our dark color. And I'm going to say that he's got, see, that feels black, doesn't it? It looks very black. 
It looks very bad, black, but it isn't, you see, and that's just the difference. It, it's not. See? It almost looks like there's a frog on his back. It kind of does, like that, doesn't it? No, no you it's just not gotta, a frog anymore. Yeah, well, I don't want a frog on his back, John. I'm sorry. So just peanut gallery over there. No no frogs. Thank you. Um, hey, Brenda would like to know, is there anything that Ginger hates to paint besides portraits? Um, uh, let's see. Um, airplanes. Mean, really? I don't want to really paint airplanes or trains and stuff like that. I mean, I will. Just I think mechanical things. I think I'm overpainting backhoes and things. So I had a job so painting backhoes. I think I want maybe a so little black over out. here. Are you telling it's, me the tractor's no, out? No, I'm not saying we wouldn't paint the tractor, but I'm saying it's not my favorite thing. I think I want a little uh, dark up here. I just think we want, I think I want this fish a little dark up here. And it, they, you, you don't want them all the same, okay? So maybe we can say that there's some, and again, the purple and the blue is sort of pretty. It, it, it's a little less, uh, um, st uh, Stark. Does that make sense? And let's put a little red with this here on this side, and it just kind of blend this in together like that. There we go. Because purple is red and blue, right? So then you can kind of blend the blue into the red. Say, here's this dark side of the fish like that. Do these guys have a top fin? Um, Who asked that? Rhonda. So, somebody wants to know if you can have a hot. Do they, they have could top put, fin? Yeah, they do now. Which is where? Tiny brush for eyes. Oh, yeah, Marie, here. Marie would just, like to know, is there one gallery that Ginger always wanted her paintings to be in, but it didn't happen? Um, well, there was one in Aspen I really want. I've forgotten what it was now, but there certainly was one in Aspen I would have liked to have been in. And, and um, I, that was about probably the one when I didn't get in. I got in all the others. But uh, really, honestly, with the level I was painting, I was in my 20s. I was like 23, 24, 25. And I mean, the artist I am today is not the artist I was at 25. I, I wasn't bad, so. yeah. but I mean, actually, it's pretty good. But you know, but you're better now. Oh yeah, because you get if you're not getting better every year, something's gone wrong here. You okay? better find a new hobby. Yeah, you've got to be getting better every year. We're going to take some of this dark now, kind of darken up these bubbles. Hey, we in would a like to places. thank Maureen for the gift card from for Jerry's. Oh yeah, thanks so much. We really ran out of paint. We're able to. You know, so appreciated that you, uh, you know, that you uh, passed that along to us. Thank you so much. That was really nice. And anybody else tonight that's been uh, donating into our, um, what is that, Help the Artist Fund or something on, on YouTube? <laughs> what is that? What's that fund that people... It's called can? the Super Chat. Super Chat Fund. So Super if anybody's chat. playing with that tonight, we want to thank you too. Um, one thing about it, we're going to take a little bit of the gold and the white. And, and over the top of the in. eyes, I'm going to just kind of do a little kind of a top of the eyes here like that. Those mm -hmm. eyebrows. Well, they're not really eyebrows, but they're almost like lids. It's almost, it's funny. They're just, they're lids. They're just like that. So we're just going to say that there's, there's almost a lid thing here. And we, we've got to put the whiskers on, right? Now, remember, we talked about that. So they've got to be wiggly like that going back. They've got to be going back like that. Here's our little wiggly whisper, whiskers. And again, if you were going to put the, if you wanted to put the fins on, you know, the top fin on, which, you know, I don't know that it adds that much to the painting, but if you wanted to do that, I would wait till it was really dry, okay? And, um, so you just get a few little more lights. Uh, Cheryl's asking a question. Ginger, is there a reason that artists on YouTube that show painting don't do fairies? Um... I think some do. I think there are some that are doing it. I think Angela Anderson's done a bunch of fairies. Seems to me like she's got some really nice fairies on her channel. Cinnamon, I think, has done a couple fairies. I tend to, uh, I know that my friend uh, Sylvia in UK wanted a fairy. In fact, when we did the wishing well, she put like a Disney-like fairy on her wishing well. It was really good. The thing about it is, is that, you know, it, you know, with, you know there's different types of artwork, you know. There's collages. There's all kinds of different types of artwork. And, you know, unlike the Apostle Paul, we can't really be all things to all people. You know, he said that, you know, to try to be all things to all people. Here's a little fin if you wanted to play like that. But um, we really, it's really kind of hard to be that. And so if you want to zoom back out a little bit, John, for yep, us, so we can kind of see that. the picture. You can kind of see how we, we've got this picture now. Now, I've got a little chalk here. And the chalk will erase with a clean brush. But you want to wait probably till it's dry to do that, <laughs> I right? See, I see color bleeding over. Yeah, you want to wait till it's dry, and then you can take your chalk off. 
um, you know, that's a good thing. And let's see, I'm going to play with this bubble a little bit and bring this, this around here like that. So you, we just can't do everything. I mean, somebody asked me the other day to do a portrait of, uh, you know, uh, do a painting by this English artist. My gosh, the guy was, um, you know, photorealistic artist, a fa fantastic artist. And it's just not the kind of thing. We do some things, like, for instance, on our website, um, you know, this is one of the paintings that we're going to be doing at a release for our members. And it's more complicated painting than I could put on YouTube. But we do, um, but we have, we offer some pretty neat complicated paintings on, and besides the very beginning paintings on our website, we have over th almost 300 paintings, lessons, step-by-step -step lessons, some of them three, four hours long to pick from. They're really, really detailed lessons. Um, next week also we're going to be reducing, this is a, releasing, this is Van Gogh's a hat. And, um, you still know, still life is, with yellow hat. Still life with yellow hat. And this is part of the kitchen series. This was the, you know, that you can, um, see this is the pot. And if you, this was the uh, Chardin. And did you guys get our newsletter, by the way? And, 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 um, that's improperly titled. It's a, yeah, and if you look in your spam right. folder, we sent out like 2,000 newsletters. If you ever gave us your email, we sent, sent those out. And if you don't want newsletters, uh, it costs Please us money surprise. to send out the, the, the emails. So we're happy to take anybody off our list that doesn't want to be on it. But anyway, here's the, uh, the copper pot. There's this one we've got coming up. Uh, in, um, if you didn't, if you missed this from last night, I showed this. This was the cabbage and onions. This was one that's going to be released on our website in coming end of May. We got all these great things, and then on, um, you know, um, YouTube itself, we've got some new stuff coming. While we're going to be out of town, we're going to release some stuff. And really, if you guys just like flowers, if you haven't done this Van Gogh, this was last week on YouTube. These wild roses. This is a fun painting to do. We've seen a lot of those come back. This is really fun, so I'm going to encourage everybody to do do that. That that's really kind of cool. Hey, John, bring back our our other picture, would you? Oh yeah, let me do that. Let me show you. Let me show you the one with the string gel. Okay, I just want you to see it, and and, and see kind of why I think it's kind of a neat addition to this. You know, the string gel. Um, and it's starting to dry clear now. Do you see it? See, here's, see, do you see how it's looking kind of web-like? Web now you're going to let you see this one. And here it is with the string gel. And I think that really adds some interesting dimension. And as some of this starts to dry clearer, tomorrow we'll show you. This will, this, I know this looks like it's blue, but it's, trust me, this is going to be um, almost like glass when it's done. It's going to look like almost like little bits of strung glass all over these fish like they're under the water, which I think is just cool as can be. That's the string gel. I was really excited to show you that. And tomorrow night, we've got something fun going for you. We're going to show you um, another one painting one with John. It's normally, it's Wednesday. This is, our la this is our last Wednesday? Last Wednesday. Last Wednesday that last we're going to be doing, Wednesday. A live Wednesday we're going to be doing uh, for next tomorrow. It's our last live Wednesday, and it's going to be a paint with John a uh, night. So John and I are going to paint together which should be fun. And we'll try to get the computer a little closer to us so we can answer some questions too. How's that? That'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be a challenge. <laughs> so, um, and you know, just so, so just to recap, this was a, tw a 12 by 20. Um, you could have used black on the fish. 12 by 20? I thought it was a 10 by 20. I, I lied. It's a 10 by 20. <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to run out looking for a 12 by 20 and nobody makes one. <laughs> <laughs> it, you're right. You're right. It is a, it is a um, 10 by 20. It is a 10 by 20. And uh, that's what this one was. And again, you could add a few more fish if you wanted to. You easily could have thrown a fish in right here, maybe. Would have been a fun one to do. And of course, you don't have to do it this particular shape either. You know, you could do it a different shape just to have fun with the koi fish. And I know that you're going to draw this in easily because I used to teach this, a very simplified version of this at our painting parties for the last seven years. And people that are three sheets to the wind and barely can hold a paintbrush could somehow manage to draw this fish out. So I know you can do it. I mean, I've got great confidence that you're going to be able to draw this out easily. And let's see, what colors didn't we use very much of? We didn't really use very much of the yellow oxide. Ooh, a ton or of the, yellow. Uh, and uh, hardly that much of the yellow. Did you use the green? We really, I mean, I uh, a little bit of the green, but I mixed it, you know, yeah, with you, the, you, you know, you mixed a little green. And this was the Southern Ocean Blue. But basically, you just want some, you just want some colors in here, right? And remember I told you that you could take a brush and change, you know, and you could do like another layer. And I'm just going to show you that now because people don't believe me, right? But, you you know, you've already got 
something going here, right? Like this. So you can take a brush like this. This is your second coat, but if you, um, you can still play with your, um, uh, with your picture. The, remember, I'll probably do this before you, um, you painted the fish in, but a second coat works really well. Sometimes the second coat is even more effective than the first coat. Sometimes it's nice to have darker corners, you know, darken the corners like this. Uh, sometimes it's nice to maybe suggest some sort of green coming through here like this. And, you know, I'm just going to come over this fish like this. And so, I mean, you've got, um, you can, for instance, with, with a round brush, you've got a lot of options as far as what you can do. Uh, with your um, with a brush like this, you can add some mystique. Here's here's let's, 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 I'm just adding mystique. Do you like it? Uh, I'm adding, uh, adding mystique. Yeah, well, it's really it's really mysterious. Let, let's thank uh, Donna for the donation. Oh, thanks, Donna. Okay, so I just wanted you guys to see that don't don't let the first coat just stop you. Have fun with this. Probably do it before you do your. Um, I would do it before you did all your. Um, um, Fishy stuff. Fishy stuff, but enjoy the process of a round brush and what you can make with it. Because listen, this is your best friend for clouds too, by the way. And you can kind of practice underwater clouds here. This is the clouds underwater, reflecting. I like that. Underwater clouds. Underwater practice clouds. underwater clouds where there's just kind of a no-fault deal here. Right? That's Anything kind of fun. Goes. It's underwater, so it's fine. It's, and then what do you do with the extra paint? Well, then you can just, uh, you know, paint around the edges like that, you know. We'll do that later with our What brush are you using now? This is, again, I like these round brushes. This is a number 14 round um, imperial bristle brush from my Creative Mark, the, the Jerry's brush. I did the other one. Let's see. Can you grab that big brush over there in the can, that blue one? The first one I did with an actual bigger brush than this, and then I thought no one's going to have one of those. So I did this one with this one. But, um, you know about this big blue one? Yeah, this big blue one. This, I did the first one with this brush. But I have to tell you, I I wasted so much paint going. So much paint went down the drain that's that I. For it's for really for a bigger painting, right? But that's another one, the Creative Mark, you know, heavy bristle brushes. And these are these round brushes are a blast, and I've you know they're just wonderful for this kind of um, look. Big one back. And you can you can use a regular brush like this, but you wear them out. And these were the round brushes are designed to do this, where your other brushes will work. But you you kind of wear them out when you do it. It's more it of makes a coarse sense. hair on those. Yeah, that. they're 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 stiff. You don't want the soft ones. You don't want a soft watercolor one. You want a stiff one like that. Okay. All right. So I would say that that's our lesson for tonight. But I hope you guys had fun with it. Not bad for an hour and a half, right? And we covered so much good, so many good things, didn't we? But oh yeah, did I show you this? Wait, there's still more. Um, this painting right here with the lilacs. That's going to be coming up on YouTube in May while we're out of town on vacation. And be sure to subscribe. I'm going to say that again because if you hit that little bell below the subscribe button, when John and I are on our trip to Florida, we're going to Florida uh, probably a week from Wednesday or Thursday. We're going to be getting the car going to Florida and then we're going on a cruise. And we're going to try to do videos from the cruise and then when we get to places where there's internet, we're going to upload. Hopefully. Or we're going to go live <laughs> at, at rest stops and anywhere we can. We're going to pop in for five minutes and say hi. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, you know, we want you to participate. And uh, anyway, thanks, you guys. And any last questions before we say yeah, goodnight, John? Yeah, um, Artsy Girl 2010 would like to know, what is the difference between painting bubbles versus water drops? Um, they're a little bit different. The, the, there's a, uh, the, that's a good quest, question. You're looking straight down on these bubbles. Where the water drops, you're kind of looking. Do you have the, the rainbow rose picture anywhere? The water drops are kind of on an angle and they're dripping so that they're a little bit different. They're similar, but they're different and they're shaped a little differently. We have a painting called Rainbow Rose. Um, is that on a canvas? What's the, rainbow Rose is on a board. Yeah, I'm going to show you that because I show you how to, and the frog too, I show you how to do the, okay. the water droplets on the frog too. And can you kind of see the difference? This one's similar. See that? This one, you can zoom in, right? That's a little tiny one, right? That one's similar, okay? It has less of the light, a ring around it, right? It has more almost of a dark edge. So it's almost a dark edge around it. Yeah. And then it's almost the color. You see, so these are slightly different, all right? Because they're against something and they're like a magnifying... Um, 
a mirror of what they're on, you know, kind of right, lighten it. Fine. So there's a couple. Here's another one. Here, see how it looks very clear? So those water droplets are slightly different than the bubbles. You know, I would say that that would be the main main reason. But they're, um, you know, yeah. you just and again the shape. They're a little bit rounder because you're looking straight down at them. You know, and if you had any color at all on the bubbles, it part of me the problem with this one is is that um, uh, I've got chalk on here, and I would like to you know, if you once you erase the chalk, the bubble looks a little better too, because I've got I've got the chalk line and as as well as the as the bubble line, if that makes sense. And so you want to kind of make sure you've erased your chalk line. So you just have the tiny bit of the light reflecting on it. The light's coming straight down from the top, which is kind of cool, like this. And this is this white again here, like that. There. Doop, doop. There's the dupe business, right? And incidentally, you can also take white on your fish, too, when it's dry, and go back and fix your pattern if you weren't crazy about your pattern. This is the nice thing about acrylics, is you can come back and fix your, you know what I mean? If you need to, you know, do something crazy with your pattern, you can. Fish are white, and they're black, and they're red, so don't be afraid to do that, either. Does using the round, uh, Monica would like to know, using the round brush the way you do, does that damage the brush? The round brush? Yeah. No, that's what they're there for. It doesn't damage yes. it. That's that's what they're designed to do. The round brushes are designed to do that. In fact, you know, if you've ever seen some really nice um, model homes where they have that faux finishing on the wall, they sell in the hardware store a brush that's about the size of a cantaloupe. It was so heavy I could barely <laughs> pick it up. Big round brush. And you do the same technique except on a wall, but you just kind of imagine how heavy that brush has got to be in doing that on a giant wall. That would just make me very tired. But the same idea. Same idea. Same idea. Yeah, but then we're just showing you how to do this. And uh, this is a great, there's not that much difference between this background and look at this one. Do you see the background on here? Same what color. is the difference? Same idea, except that we use different colors. Use the browns. We use browns and not blues. So learning how to do this pattern is very good. It's very good. It's good for portraits. We've got it, um, we've got it on the dog. See, that's the background for this dog. All right. The background um, you use a lot. I use this background probably in about 30, 30 to forty percent of my paintings. I use that background. It's a great background. Yeah, and it's, and it's also a good way to do clouds. All right, last question before we say good night. Last question. Sorry, I have no more. All right, then. Hey, you guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we appreciate you very much. And big art hugs here from Houston, Texas. Likes and. Um, uh, fat comments are appreciated. Any comment you write while we're live will not show up on the um, on our video because they we lose all your great comments once the video. What what's going to happen is that someone's going to say I can't find the video. That's because after it's live, then YouTube has to do some sort of processing thing. It takes a while, and then once it's processed, and then all these great comments that you guys made tonight are gone. So if you feel like you said something important, we'd love to hear it again. Absolutely. And, I, and the rest of the world would like to hear it. And everybody wants to know your opinion, so feel free to give it. <laughs> and, and, unless you're saying something mean and then we don't want to hear it at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the way it is. It's the way it is, right? <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you tomorrow night for a special Final Wednesday live edition of, what's that one called? John's Journey. No. What's the official name for Wednesday? Ginger Snaps. Ginger Snaps. Digital Snap Wednesday tomorrow, 7.30 Central. Be sure to tell your friends, share, like, subscribe, post, post toasties. Good night, John. Good night, Ginger. Hit the button. Good I night. hit the button. Did I hit the button? I hit the button. Good night, Sammy. Good night, Sammy. In your silly hat. <laughs>